What are the things someone should look for when considering a new church? Maybe you've moved from one side of the country to the other or even over town and you've been very happy in your church. Or maybe you're looking for another reason, sad reason, that things are happening in that church you just feel that you have to leave and find a new one, whatever the case. What to look for? Well, we have two families. We have our own personal family and we have the family of God. Jesus had two families on earth. He had his family in Nazareth and he was the head of the family. He was the oldest son. He was the carpenter that cared for a, quite a large family apparently. And for his widowed mom when his dad, uh, Joseph died. So he had 30 years there and then three years in ministry, if you wish, or running a church, if you wish, and teaching and all of that. Um, he only left Nazareth and the synagogue there, which was his church, brought up in the synagogue, went to the synagogue, etc., etc., when God uh, said it's time for you to do something else with your life and to become a pastor of pastor, of all pastors, right? Um, so how do we know when God wants us to leave and not stay if there's problems there that we might be part of the solution and not just leave and find a better place for us? Guidance is a funny thing. God guides us in many, many ways. I think the best uh, illustration that I ever heard was to teenagers years and years ago. My husband was preaching about finding the will of God. Uh, you're trying to land on a decision. Think of yourself in a little plane, in the dark. The night has come, there are no stars out. But you see the runway because there are lights lit along it. And the idea is to make sure that there's enough light lit before you land. And of course, the airport see to that. The problem is we often land on one light. What are the lights? Well, there are indications in the Bible of how you find the will of God. Number one in the book of Psalms is there is safety in the multitude of counselors. What does that mean? Who knows you best? Who are wise people? Who loves you? Is it your parents? Is it your employer? Is it somebody that you know that's a Christian that has been a help to you and is a little further along the line than you? Um, the advice of older Christians uh, I don't mean older in physical age, because often you're older in spiritual age than the person you're trying to help. And so go to somebody like that and say, this is what I'm thinking of doing, what do you think? See what they say. Now don't land on one light. You mustn't land on one light. There's other lights. What else does the Bible say? Timing. Maybe you get an idea. I think I ought to pack up and go over there and do something, become a missionary or whatnot. Um, all right, get some advice. Um, that might be what God is beginning to whisper in your soul. I want you somewhere else. I want you to do this, that, and the other for me. Um, go to somebody that knows you well. If you've been a Christian for a little while, I hope you've got those people, and say, this is, this is the thoughts that have come into my mind. I, I've just thought, I, I think I'm ready to do this, that, and the other, or a job, or whatever it is that you want. And see what the wiser Christian will say to you. And maybe they'll say, great. And maybe they'll say, great, but not yet. Timing. This is terrific, but you need to get trained, or you need to, or, you know. So that's two lights. Then there is um, the light of the Word of God itself. I hope you're reading it daily, 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 not just looking and picking out a verse to show you what to do with this decision, but systematically get some sort of help to read the Bible every single day. God knows where you'll be in the Bible the day that you need to make a decision or start and think about it. And you'd be amazed. I remember, I'll give you an example, when I was a teacher and working with young people um, who were in the wrong sort of places after school. And uh, I began to chase them down after school. And um, 
it, it was, it's a long story, but it, it worked. And I found my kids in places they shouldn't be, in drug dives and those sort of places. And I began to go there looking for them and just sit with them, have a cup of coffee and talk with them. And there was one place that uh, uh, one of my young people wanted me to go into that was a real, very bad place and possibly dangerous, and it was a drug place. Uh, it was a pub and it was not good for 13 year olds, but they would always head for this. And uh, <clears throat> it wasn't that I was frightened, I was certainly concerned about just walking into that place. But that wasn't what stopped me going in. I was the teacher. I was there. I thought, if people see me going in this place, uh, it's going to look really bad. <laughs> I saw the you know, teacher walking into that place. And I, I, I realized I wasn't really bothered about um, the fear side of it. I was bothered about my reputation. Now. If I was doing it for God, forget your reputation. He made himself of no reputation and came down here. Uh, but suddenly I realized I cared too much about my reputation. Was I willing to do it even if somebody did see me, etc., etc.? So then I said to God, if that's stopping me saying yes to Trevor, show me. You know where I am in the Bible. And I open my Bible, and three days later, you just, you don't find it at the moment, uh, alert me. And I came to Philippians 2 in the course of my teaching, and I still hadn't said yes to Trevor, I'd go in with him to this place. And uh, I was looking and thinking and doing my ordinary Bible study, and here it was. God made the great graph of grace from heaven's highest glory, and it says, He made himself of no reputation. That's pretty clear. So I take that one. Timing could be it. It's the right thing, but not the right time. And you shouldn't go in by yourself. You should go in with a team, etc., etc. So try and get as many lights going as you can. Uh, and when, when you've got enough light to see the runway, start and make a move on your decision. Start and land on your decision being willing to abort the landing and say to God, if I shouldn't be doing this, I don't need to land on this, just stop me. And he'll answer that prayer too. So just a very a few practical things uh, about a new church. Do the same, should I, go, should I leave this church and should I go to a new church? And then start and think about um, what is the Bible telling me? What are my friends telling me? Why? Ask the question, why does God want me literally to stay here and uh, rescue and make a difference, etc., etc., etc. And when you have enough lights lit, start and move onto the decision saying, uh, if this is right now, let me just land on it and go ahead. There's so much more I'd love to tell you about this. You can go to Telling the Truth and find a series on this on my website and it's called Finding God's Will for Me.